Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM. If music be the food of love, play on, play on, play on. It's a musical edition of Desert Island Discs here on 91.3 Capital FM, complete with our social media platforms, YouTube and Facebook. Welcome. Fresh start to fresh week. But yes, incredible folks that have distinguished themselves sharing their life stories on the program. My name is Simon Cassiati. And on the program, I have a musical person, an incredible lady who four times in the recent past guest after guest after guest after guest have requested their soul they believe she's one of the most underrated ugandan musicians the lyrical value of her songs the depth of the music in it and the feel when she serenades just gets you loving music even the more forget about today's bubblegum music she actually does sing and so Tribute to those that chose her music. We say, let's bring her here to tell her life story. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Sarah. Asha, Ziwa, Nava, Grace, so many names. How do you want us to call you? All right. Uh, <laughs> there were those names, but uh -huh. then there were certain changes that were made mm -hmm. because of uh, having, to dis having discovered the lineage where I come, the, uh, the actual lineage, so that Ziwa is no longer there. So now we keep it with the Nava Grey. Yeah, because of the. We, we discovered that my father comes from the royal kingdom as well, because I thought he was an ordinary folk, an ordinary like, folk me. like me. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> he was a mukoki. So uh, you know. we realized that we're we're coming from, I'm coming from the royal family, from both sides, mom and father, my, my dad. Wow, and the gray is a surname or a no gray? <laughs> gray all the gray thing come came about when I was looking for a name uh, a name on Facebook. Uh huh. When I placed the names that I had, then Nava, someone else had those names. So Asha, had, Nava. Yeah. So, it be something. so I remembered Grey's Anatomy and I was like, let me just put the grave because I used to love Grey's Anatomy during that time. Actually. Well, you have inspired many. I've seen other people calling themselves different colors. I can <laughs> like call blue? myself Simon Blue. <laughs> Not a bad idea. I'm comfortable with it. <laughs> Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. How do you feel? I mean, well, I would feel flattered if I'm told that folks after folk choose my music yeah. as their best because we choose our music on the program. Just it's an honor. I, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, it's 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 like a dream come true. Ah, oh, come on, I'll stop. No, like seriously, okay? like before I began music, uh -huh. I, I never thought it was just a dream. Like I would have people sing my music, sing back to my music or love my music because I was writing it for myself. I didn't realize that I was, I mean, relating with everybody else. You're kidding me. Yeah. Like, At seriously. what point did you get into this music thing? I thought it was, um, Oh, yeah, I'm the last born of five children. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I used to look up to them. I thought they were better than I because they were multi-talented from artists. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could draw you like crazy. When it came to music, they were perfect. I didn't place myself, I mean... So you come from a musical family. In other yes. words, you could have a wonderful choir yes. from just the household. Yes. Mm -hmm. My father was a good artist, though he was a businessman. Wow. He used to draw, he used to paint. Uh -huh. Recently, I was talk, talk, speaking to my sister and she was like, yeah, dad used to draw. I mean, apart from being a business kind of person, he used, mm -hmm. to, he used to draw really well. He would draw a car and you'd be like, what? Wow. And I didn't see these things. But because they're my elders, they knew more. And uh, when it came to cricket, because I have a, the firstborn plays a lot of, loves wow. cricket. But <laughs> Interesting. We have doctors, we have all these kinds of people, but so they love music. They love music. That's the uniting thing around yes, the family. Yes, I mean, I take a song back to my sister and she'll be uh, first to criticize that you didn't 
no, it, it's lacking. There's not something. You haven't hit the pitch yes, right. Yes, yes. So I thought I wasn't as 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 good mm -hmm. as they were. So I didn't. I couldn't place myself, you know, with them. I felt myself like ah. You you can't do music, <laughs> but I love music. We mm -hmm. love music. I mean, in school we were always singing, but I was afraid to go out to the crowd and and sing and sing. Later on, of course, on the program, you'll be telling us about that first day on the big stage yeah. with a big hit. Oh, wow. uh, let's go back to where it all began, because you already almost took us there, but then we're back from it. Exactly. Last born in a family of five. Yeah, of five. But then, okay, tell us uh, to whom were you born? Who's your dad and ma'am? Uh, how was your childhood, the best of your recollection? Mm, I was born to Prince Morondo, that was my father. Wow. He, but before he was called Aziwa, mm -hmm. until we discovered he was a prince. A prince, and then he and had then, to get the princely name. Yes. <laughs> then to a princess, uh, Ndagire. Mom was a princess as well? Yes, Tracy. Wow. Isn't that a case of incest? But she also <laughs> comes... Two royals. <laughs> but she also uh, comes... Her father was half Irish, half Muganda. Oh. That means her great grandfather was a uh, was called a go uh, a lowry Cory from the Irish kingdom. Okay, uh, not sound bigoted, but I think I had noticed that your color doesn't look quite natural. To us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you see my sister. Wow, some of my siblings. So yeah, there, there was always something a bit uh, different uh, different about you. Yeah. So here you are, a quarter Irish, quarter then the Irish. other two thirds, uh, the yeah. other two uh, then, three um, quarters. Ugandan. So we have Jews also. Oh, okay. Yeah. So your home is the United Nations. Also. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that again. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. So, so we realized that uh, from both lineages, well, they were runaways. Like you know, this kind of people that were not want, did not want to be confined in the kingdom. The royal, the kind royal of kind setting. of yeah. So they they ran away and kind of to live their lives. That brings from both sides. That brings. Prince Harry's name to mind, you know, he could also start his own lineage exactly. there. Exactly. So how him. this is how the intermarriages began. Wow. Prince Harry again. Yeah. <laughs> From my mother's side and my father's side, they all run away. Then let's now let's get to you. Mm. Last born in a family of five. Mm. Spoiled to brother, I must, I, I, I must think. Or am I wrong? I Prove think wrong. so, yeah. Because I mean, Everybody babied you. Yeah. I, at one point, I didn't have sense of direction because... I mean, I had all these people to look up to. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And your parents had since lost the energy of beating and shaping us like African kids. Of course. Eh? Like they me, never did. <laughs> then the music beat. I like, we love music, but to my father, God rest his soul, he didn't like kind of think that music would get us anywhere. So it was all about, go read your books. Become doctors. Yeah, exactly. He found you like singing some song, being like, go, go and... Singing is restricted for the bathroom and church. Exactly. So. <laughs> So we kept, we, it's only mom that invited that I, the, the, the singing thing, because she loved to sing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, for example, if power went off, I mean, that's what we, we were resorting, we resorted to. What were to. you singing? Um, Christian hymns? No, like any songs? other song, any, any or song. pop songs of the moment. For example, songs like, uh, when I was just a little girl, mm -hmm. I asked my mother, what will I be? Such songs, she loved wow. that song. Mm -hmm. One of those songs that she loves, Till, till now. She used to sing to us. So the musicals, like Sound of Music, were always, of course, yeah, exactly. in the house. Yes, um, my mom loved MJ. She used to buy lots of, I think they were, yeah, lots of tapes. So we listened to Madonna, from Madonna to Kenny Rogers to, to like the Yosu and those, mm -hmm. the Angelique Kijos, like everything. Every genre came to Every mind. genre came to mind. Singing the and dancing come almost hand in hand. Exactly. How's your dancing part? My dancing part is not that good. Cause... You have two left feet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. Schooling. Schooling. Little girl. Mm. Where did life take you in terms of schools? There was a, the moment, uh, for example, when I had to, my mom was a nurse, so we used to, at one point she went to Nairobi. I followed her there, so I started to study. I came back. I was in Buganda Road, then I went to Chibuli from then. Chibuli was in secondary school? Yeah. Or you went to the primary demonstration school? But then I was there for one year, and then I had to go to a range of schools that I can't name right now. Because, because I was of like why? More freelance, because I'm, I'm moving with my mom. I'm the last born, she has to hold me on ah. the hand. The rest of my siblings are in boarding schools there, but I'm the for one. For you, you're the handbag. Exactly. That must have disorganized you in of the sense that you did. never made real friends from you know, school yeah, as by the, the case. Way, like, seriously. 
you feel a sense of regret therefore? No, I don't. I mean, life has, there's a reason for everything. You can't regret certain so do, things. So do you think that moving from school to school and moving around with your mom gave you something that your siblings possibly don't have to date? The ability to gel into a new environment every so often? I think more I like needed mom degree. more because I was so vulnerable. How so? There was no way she could leave me anywhere. I mean, I would, I would cry and disorganize everybody. So she has to be with me all the time. I mean, cry that's what baby. my siblings, yes, I was a cry baby. Wow. I needed direction. I couldn't see myself independent doing anything without her. Today you are an independent female adult, I want to believe. Thank God. How did that come about? <laughs> I think being exposed to so many, ex I mean, I went through so many experiences. Mm -hmm to relationships, to giving birth at a tender age mm -hmm. and all those kinds of things. So they gave me a sense of independence. I realized that I, couldn't, I can do so much by myself. By yourself. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Giving birth at a tender age, that gives me a bit of an interest in knowing mm. how many children you have. I have one. One. Mm. And, and she's 13 now. And she's 13. Yeah. She must be your height, perhaps your size. Like taller. Well. So you have almost adult conversations. Because she's like a sister now. <laughs> I so believe she's even smarter. Later on in the program, you'll be telling us about her in as much as it's your life story. But does she sing, if I may ask? She, okay, she used to love to sing when she was like that age. Mm -hmm, the little ones. Now she, she grew up to be, she, wants, she likes to speak, speak more. She, she started to love journalism. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, she, she, it's like she wants to do everything. That's music still, everything. She possibly she will speak her way she, into a rap. She, she's an artist, the father ah. is a painter. Wow. She loves to, to draw. She, she yeah. loves, she wants to do everything. She loves to dance, she loves to, to know, sing and she all loves that. To sing. Plan a duet with her, maybe. She plays the, the, piano, the piano, like me. <laughs> 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 now, on the program, we choose our music. Yeah. Of course, you've got incredible music. I would listen all day to your own music. Mm. Which of your songs shall we play first? Now, this never happens usually. I ask <laughs> my guests to choose their music. Okay. Tonight, I choose my song. Yeah. Which of your songs? Which of my go? songs? Okay, there's a song uh, uh, called Njakwa Gala. It's not even on YouTube. I chose not to put it there. This is the one that you sing to that person that you actually want to love. Because that's what the title says. Njakwa mm, Gala. I will love you. Can we therefore say we are debuting that song to the public ear on the program tonight? Cool. Ah, we got a deal. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to it. I have no opinion about it mm -hmm. until when the reviews come through from our listeners. All right. We'll be right back. It's Desda Landis. We have the pleasure of debuting in Jack Kwangala, sung by Nava Gray, who's our guest on the program tonight. We'll be right back. Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM. And now you show me Omukwano mutari nkenyera Mwenya katina fune mirembe Seye yangiri ato kunyaja Ngane akala Ulichoya gara chingambe Chakwa gari nane mumuru wande Guno mukwano kusukurume Send you up, you won't get a move cut there. That's only one. Chukunda kini 
Welcome back. It's Dance Thailand Discs. The pleasure of having Nava Gray on the program is uh, something quite not usual. Mm -hmm. Beginning of the year, having such an incredible guest, you can feel the vibe in every sense of the word. I hope you like her song that we've debuted on the program, the song that she keeps to herself. One wonders who she actually sang it for. Anyone in mind when you sang that Nobody. song? Nobody. I just place myself in other people's shoes. And sing. And imagine if I was in this kind of situation, how would I relate to it? How would someone feel? How does it feel? But quite often, you may find yourself in that situation as well. This is not a situation that is out of reach for of you. Of course, sometimes. There, so. there, there are songs that I relate to. There are songs I write for my own, ex I mean, my own experience. Some that, I, that just come out of the blue. Some the track, the beat kind of directs me. Wow. Yeah. Folks have said you are one of the most underrated Ugandan musicians. Mm. Is that the first time you're hearing that? No, 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 it's not the first time. What do you think they mean by being underrated? Do I think mean? the way most of the artists do it is they have to put their private um, life out in the open. I think maybe it's their way, their own way to uh, to feel. I think that they're human and relate to everybody else. So the scandals and everything out there in the open. And I don't do that. I can swear to you that many people have listened to your songs. Many people know the name Nava Gray, mm. but they possibly will not pick you out of the crowd and say, that's Nava Gray. Yeah. Why I thought being a superstar, a celebrity, a musician of mm. name, mm. means having name and face recognition. Why do you keep yourself under the wraps, behind the curtains, <laughs> under the carpet? I think it's, it's more... Uh, that drives more from where I come from, how your we were upbringing. raised. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were not let out of the out of the house. I mean, if you you found out of the house outside of the house, I mean, it would be serious beating or something of that sort. You're kidding me. So you were raised in a prison, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> I think it was okay. What you maybe literally? Well, you could, yeah, it's a prison, but not literally. No, yeah, like you're not. You're supposed to. The, there are certain boundaries. I think there was a sense of protection. Maybe my father found it um, the best way to raise us. And mom, I mean, maybe there were dangers out there. They want us to be kidnapped or something of that sort. So that's why a sense of having protection, extreme... Extreme protection. Extreme protection. And that protection. then carries along with you into your adulthood and comes in yeah. to direct your career path of growth and development as a musician. Exactly. Or are you not a musician? I could be here speaking to you thinking you're a musician, mm -hmm. yet you run other things and music is just one of those hobbies you do on a weekend. Of course, once in a while. Tell me. So there's certain things that, of course, like family businesses mm -hmm. and stuff like real estate. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you wake up on a day in Nava, mm -hmm. it's not that every single day is vocal training day, mm -hmm. lyrical writing, studio type. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. You wake up and go carry out your hustle like any other guy yes. doing with different things. Yes. And then when the music uh, spirit hits you, you hold the mic, drop it you. Because I'm always singing to myself. Like it's like we could be seated here and I, I feel I want to write. Like it's it's natural. It flows naturally. Pass me a pen. I think we, we may have a song written on the program. But we, we need someone to play the key. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it comes about. It's not that you I don't plan this. Mm -hmm. I don't plan music. I like I can tell you there's certain songs that are out there, but I did not plan them. Ningo Mologe. Ningo Mologe. Now, Ningo Mologe. That is the, the, the listener's favorite, but the guest's number one. Imagine. Whenever they say Navagre, that one. Ningo Mologe. Mm -hmm. Ningo Mologe came, I think uh, that was like 2009. I was moving around the house, and there was a song that was playing by Mafiki Zolo, and it had this specific instrumental that kind of led me to Ningo Mloge. I said it right. I remember I was cleaning around the house and it's then I wrote. Yes. Uh -huh. Then I completed it, completed the writing 2012. That's when I went to studio. <sighs> it took you that long. Yeah, imagine. But you had songs. to do. Yeah. Because there was some, when I went in stu to studio, I had to complete whatever was incomplete about, about, about the song. And I think we recorded that song at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. at night. Yeah. Why? That's when the voice is at its best. No, like we kept, I kept helping the pro producer with how it should flow, this place, this here, place that there. You know, like there's these voices in my head that tell me, do this, this is required. You know, it just comes naturally. I can't explain wow. it really. Because the, the, the beat itself, I, I had to give it to him. I had to direct him to do the track my way. The lyrics uh -huh. my way. So wow. it was all about me 100%. But then again, 
Mm. What does the song mean? Anyway. Ningo mloge, like, uh, I'm like the bewitched, but not bewitched in a bad way. <laughs> you are in a trance. Love, yeah, kind of thing. You are in this. Because I was not in love during that, the moment that people kept say. I mean, people, people kept asking me, is it? Who caused this to you? Who yeah, this song. Time? Were you in love when you wrote this song? I mean, why does it, why do we relate to this song? Yet we're in love. Yeah. And I was not in love. By the way, I was even, it was, it was during a time where I was facing a crazy breakup with the father of my child. That's when I wrote that song. You know, when you're alone, you want to feel loved. So as an artist, I, it drew me to write how I would want to be treated, how I would want to feel at that very moment. So Ngomblogi kind of. And after you dropped the hit, mm. to the person at now, personal level, sorry if I'm sounding a bit intrusive, mm. Did they pick it like it was a signal, like a message of, you know, this is what you should have done. This is what you could do. Mm, I, don't, I don't think. Someone else speak it up. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. So it's actually true when mm. people say that mm. music is a place people go to yes, to escape exactly. realities. Yes. Or even to just accentuate the realities they are facing. Mm, mm. It is, because it's my safe haven. But then again, I run away from reality when and I... And run to music. Yeah. Yet again, it's not that place where you go to earn a living. Yeah. You earn it elsewhere. Of course. Like, the, what, what I earn most does not come from the music from the that music. I do. Maybe that explains why you're also not out there, because for you, music is not a do or die. No, it's not. It's something that is a part of me that no one can take away. Even if there is no crowd cheering on, I can still do it. You can still do it. Yes, and enjoy it. Let's go back to your life story. Somehow we stopped you yeah. going to different schools mm, and all that. Mm. And then at what point did you stop studying? No, there was or this, you, still you know, <laughs> of course, studying, you never You, you never, never stopped studying. But I'm saying yeah. formally. Like there was that point during the, remember the Tasca project thing, mm -hmm. kind of competition came through. But before it came, I remember, in 2006, I was sleeping, and I dreamt myself on that stage. Of Tasca Project Film. Tasca Project Film, and people were cheering on. So when I woke up, I was like, will this, will this actually happen? <laughs> will I finally sing? Can I sing? Can I sing to crowds? Because I was really uh, very nervous when it came to stage things and everything. Well, you are nervous, so feeling nervous <laughs> should come naturally. So by 2008, <laughs> that is like, I'd had the dream 2006, 2008. I actually went for these competitions. My family urged me to go for them. Not your dream, your family. My family, but I also want, I, at one point in my life, I felt like I needed to do something, something different, something not the usual. Mm -hmm. Of course, the school beat was there, but there's something I really wanted to indulge myself in. Mm -hmm. I needed to know where I belonged. So in the competition you went, and you passed the auditions. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I passed auditions, but it was really uh, surprising and shocking that I, I passed those auditions. Why? Because I never sang to people before. You know, I only sang to my family members. So when you, you just take us back to the audition room, mm. you get in there, mm. the judges are right before you. Of course, yeah. And then what did you drop? The songs. Mm -hmm. There's a song by Kesha White. I'm not the sort of person who loves in and quickly out of love. That song. You know that song? You actually had it. Why do you come here when you know I can answer the phone? I know the song. I won't sing along with you. Sing! <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't sing to save a life. Although I have a feeling mm -hmm. I have such a great musical voice. Maybe let's try. Mm -hmm. Should they do it? We, we should, <laughs> That's the day you Now that you mentioned. <laughs> That's the day you quit music. Are you sure? Oh, yes. Is that bad? No, I'm that good. You realize I'm not bad. <laughs> I'm kidding. So, so you hit it and the judges get So I was choice. nervous. Imagine, mm -hmm. and I, 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 I have this fright. At that moment, I'm not exposed anywhere. I only sing to the people that I'm so familiar with, my mm -hmm. sister, my mother. You're just like, These eyeballs. are strangers. So I don't look at them when I'm singing. I want to look away. Or I look at the light up or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. And I went through just like that. You didn't even look at the expressions as you sang? It's you... afterwards. It's after, like, oh, I'm like, done oh. singing. I don't want to look at them because I know they're going to see some glitches and the criticism that I left back home is going to follow me follow to, you all through. to these, the judges. And so they say you are through to the yes, next stage. Yes, they say you are through. You scream, mm. you clench your fist, 
Yeah. And pick the next song to amaze them. Exactly. What was that next song that you did? There were so many songs. Mm -hmm. Some I don't even remember. <laughs> I sang a couple of songs. There are so many None songs. But that form. song, I didn't have a song then. I, I, uh -huh. I, I didn't know that I could even write a song then. But that particular song? I was like raw talent. Wow. Raw talent. And then you glide through. Yeah, to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, onto the big stage. Mm -hmm. Where there are all these uh, emotions all over the place. There is crying. There is getting Lovely. tired of the place. I want to leave. I'm tired. I'm not so used to this, you know? And kind then there is this judge. What's his name? Ian. Ian. Yeah. Doing his job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you look at it that way. Yeah, I looked at it that way. I think he was only I, being nasty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, that, at least uh, during that time, I was, you know, aware of everything that was happening. Mm -hmm. If they tell you you're out, you're out. You pack your bags and go. Mm. Let's play the next song now. Mm. What will it be? My own song. You're playing nobody else's song tonight. Mm. There's, a called, there's a song called Kangome. How? Kangome. Kangome. Yeah. Yes, I've listened to that one. Sun usually plays it. Uh -huh. That one. Very good. That song, mm. why? Why are you choosing it to come in as number two? Is there something you're really struggling with that you have to be resilient about? I'm hoping I've translated Kangome with the word resilience. Kangome, I don't know. It's just a friend of mine came to mind that really, 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 really loves it. Wow. Yeah. For our listening pleasure, as chosen by Nava Gray herself, a song that she sang, Kangome. She hasn't told us the circumstances that, in, you know, <laughs> worked around her to write and do this song. But as you can say, it looks like much of what she does is from divine intervention. She dreams, yeah. she thinks, things just fall from heaven and she actuates them. So we'll be right back. Stay with us. Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM. It's this Thailand Discs, and the program is on a roll. Nerve Gray sharing her life story. An incredible Ugandan musician. And like many have said on this program, one of the most underrated Ugandan musicians. Mm. I insist on that. And guess mm. why? When I had Patrick Ayota, he's the deputy managing director of LSS Patrick on Ayota. the program. Mm. He said, I don't know Uganda. But I was in this car driving to the airport with a friend of mine. Mm. And this tune came through and it hit me. Mm -hmm. 
Early in the program, he said he had studied a bit of music, mm. classical music Ooh. from the US nice. as part of his training and many things. Mm. When your song came through the speakers, he was like, this can't surely be a Ugandan. Mm. Although the language sounds like Uganda. Mm. From then on, that song mm. is his favorite tune. Imagine. And it's, he's a, it's a man that loves this song. Not Looks only. like... Uh, More gentlemen mm -hmm. love this song than the ladies. Why do you say so? Have you carried out the survey? Yes, I, I think <laughs> I have. Because when I go to perform it, you see the men relating to it, relating to this song more and cheer, cheering, cheering on. Yeah, Others, it's uh, like expressing a lot of emotions as they sing along to it. Imagine no, a man no. sing along to this song. Can I say that maybe you're a bit naive? <laughs> <laughs> are you sure it's about the song or they are looking at you? I don't know. Uh -huh, Simon, no. you just tell me. <laughs> now you see. What do you see? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I won't speak for all of them. Okay. But I wouldn't be mistaken to say the mm. cheering may not so much be about the music. Are you sure? It could be about you. And take that in this, stride as this, well. The, the, the gentlemen you've, um, I think the men, not mm -hmm. women, that you have interviewed here. Including some ladies I've chosen music. Okay. Yeah. Although how I must many, admit, how many more? They're, they're more, more gentlemen more than gen the ladies. See? <laughs> and to be very honest, I don't think any of those gentlemen actually knows how you look like. Exactly. See? So, no, you have the answer, just. Yeah, I was just trying to be naughty. You know, sometimes you have to bring in that uh, spice nuisance. It all a bit. You have to bring in some nuisance factor. Okay, <laughs> can you imagine? Now, back to you mm. and you sharing with us your life story. Mm. So you go through the rigors of a regional competition mm. the size of Tasca Project fame, yeah. and it launched you on the big stage. Exactly. When you walked out of there, what was on your mind? I wanted to like, I was like, okay, I didn't win. Mm -hmm. It was a semi-finalist, so let me just go and do what I, carry on with what I was doing, the school and everything. But, but because of that stage, like people, kind of would relate to me, relate with me. That's Nava, that's, that's remember her, Tusker Project mm -hmm. Fame. Mm -hmm. So I got in touch with so many producers, so many artists wanted me to kind of help them with certain songs, backing up and everything. Mm -hmm. Now the fact that I could, I, because of the training there, I knew how to write songs and stuff. So I started to like work, embark on my career. But before that, I met Steve Jean. Wow. An incredible guy. Yeah, through GNL, there was a certain kind of concert concert that was happening, and I was helping to back GNL. Uh -huh. And Steve Jane was happened to be around, uh, helping him with the like what it does. The usual, best. Yeah. yeah. So he's like from music production to stage lights and everything. Yeah. So like he gave me a call one day and I was like, I want you to come and do some voice check at my studio. Maybe we could Fair start on. working together. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. It was a Sunday. I told him that ah, today I'm not free, so maybe Monday. So then the that Monday I went, and I have a, I had a couple of songs that I'd done with the likes of. I went through the likes of Mr. Semakula, mm -hmm. you know the kind of music that they do. Exactly. <laughs> and of course, I'm not. I was not yet there vocally, you know. But you had backed glitches. them up. And they had contacted you again on the account of you being on Tasca Project. Yeah. Right? So after meeting Mr. Semakula. Uh, as soon as I left Tasca Project Fame, I met with Mr. Semakula. I went to his studio said, with a friend of mine who was also from the Tasca Project Fame competition, Wendy. Uh -huh. So we started like, they wanted to like kind of do a girl's band. But things didn't work out. So I met, I got in touch with Steve Jean. So that's when my career started. So when you hit the studio of Fenon on Monday, mm. you find Steve Jean there. I found, uh, yeah, I find mm -hmm. Steve Jean there. And it's like, there's a producer here I want you to meet. That was Michael Mugisha, mm -hmm. Michael Fingers. I think you have. I have heard about you. Yeah. yeah those interests. By the time, by that time, it was coming from the UK. And he wanted to like kind of start a production kind of a house here. Mm -hmm. So Steve Jean was like, you could work with him. He has a cup. He has a good touch. Try him. So I sat in the studio with this gentleman and I played him my songs. Wow. And, the, and it was like, okay, these songs of yours won't work. Uh huh. But I have, but the fact that, so I, I felt, you know, when you say that you, those songs won't work, work, I was like, You played oh, them on so tape much. or you sang them? On, on, uh, by then they were like CDs and uh -huh. stuff. And it's like, okay, they are good songs, but they are not going to give you that direction that you want. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, I don't want to lower your spirits. I have a couple of beats with me. You could check them out and see which one can work for you. So he stepped out and there's a specific beat that, beat that I was listening to. He had called it a happy... Happy day or 
it's like sunny day or something of that sort. And that was the Antere Day beat. Wow. Mm-hmm. And when I, yeah, mm-hmm. when I hang in Bante Day, that one. Mm-hmm. So then, then I was able to come up with a chorus. Wow. Just like that. Yeah, it, the words just, I was also amazed. But then Steve Jin was there and he said, you know what? I think because maybe I was not singing, uh, mm-hmm. you know, with that perfect voice. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, this voice, it won't do. I felt <laughs> let down again. Your voice won't do. <laughs> That 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 what that you've just written won't do. Mm. So he stepped out because he was busy. Mm-hmm. But this guy, but this, but Michael told me, you know what? Don't worry. Go home. Come back tomorrow morning, very early in the morning. We we record it. I like it. We record it. Home you went. I went home. I cried a bit. Oh. You know those things. <laughs> Remember, I was a bit vulnerable. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, I know. Remember, I used to work with my mom. Exactly. Everywhere. Now you're beginning to see life in its own yeah. truest. So yeah. So I was told, you know what? Don't have. Don't. Uh, uh, someone told me, don't. Don't feel pity for yourself. You can do this. So you know, I come from a Muslim background. Mm-hmm. I prayed two. What do you call it? Two rakas. Wow. Allah, what? What do you know? Mm-hmm. That kind. Of, so I prayed to God to help me, on, give me the lyrics to this song. On my end, we call them novenas, and they're a bit longer than that, and they take mm. a couple of days. Mm. So when you did your two rakas? Two rakas, I asked God for lyrics. And in the morning, I went to record this song, and I just put the chorus in this song, and Steve Jin would not leave the this, this studio. Everyone was like, this song, it was like, done. Wow. It sounded, just imagine just the chorus and said, and that was the only part there. Again, the words came as a result of the beat or there was a story somewhere in the back of your mind? Nothing. The beat. The beat. Yeah. And just gave you the words That's what that I rhymed. Said. Yes. It makes it sound so simple, yet it's very difficult. I know it Getting is, music. but I was also amazed that I could come up with something of that sort. Because I used to pray to God before I started this walk, this journey, that with music, that I should be original. Because remember, I'd come from Mr. Chisamakura. Mm-hmm. God has, had taken me through there to here. You know, these guys write their own music, and exactly. they're good at it in their own way. But I wanted to come out different, and in I didn't know what would way. make me original. So I kept praying about this and see somebody's brought from, from the UK with these Western beats and I had to fit Luganda onto this. On the Western beat, Happy Day. Yeah, it was, he called, I think it was called <laughs> Happy Day. So when Steve Jean stayed in the studio and there was this Eureka moment in the studio. Everyone was like, you should finish this song. This song is already a hit. It's a hit. Yeah. And you went back home. Yeah, and I wrote the rest of, rest of the lyrics. Uh-huh. And everything worked out. So I got also some, I got some help from a friend of mine during that time. Yeah, Editing the Luganda, I was not so good with the Luganda. But when I got to writing, I don't know, these words just flow easily. And I get a word and ask my grandmother, what does this word mean? And she said, how did you get that word? But so, this, yeah. it's like the spirit was, called, was kind of um, married to this calling wow. of mine. That's very interesting. So. Mm-hmm. At this point in time, mm-hmm. you record the song, then how does it transit from what they have in the studio mm-hmm. to what we begin to hear on the airwaves? And how did you feel the first time you had your own song, with your own voice, I, on an FM stage? It was, it was like, a, what do they call it? Like a new, I think the song was called New Day. Mm-hmm. New Day. The track, he had named it New Day. New Day. So it was like an, a transformation like an emergence of something different. So until it was your first song ever that I recorded yes, that you in recorded, studio that went on the airwaves. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. It was the first song I recorded, but Ali Bawani was the first song that was that went out. That went out. Yeah. So just give us the feeling when you first listened to your own song on the airwaves. I can't explain that moment. It was like a new something new for me, something different. The phone calls. Imagine a girl that has been. Uh, hiding herself somewhere, about to, you know, break through as a as an artist with a song that I've penned down and recorded and recorded your own voice. Imagine. Wow. How then did you take on the attention it brings? Because when the song plays, 
first your family will get down and say then of course, friends there are those that believed in me my uh-huh. sister was like yes i knew you had it before because she'd been very supportive even when the voice was croaking like a frogs during that like time that she was like i believe in you i believe in you even if everyone else was criticizing me to the point that you know don't do music because i had so many of them don't do music just leave music you can't do it you can't sing you can but i loved it the passion was brewing you know there was this fire that had to sing mm-hmm. every time i i saw somebody on stage i something happened i felt like i need to be on stage i cannot explain it nava so how about we play that song tell it as if that song that's all right just to give us <laughs> awake and aware yeah of how the it very went, first the song the very first, first song you recorded yeah and the initial rejection that came with it eh? exactly oh, a lot of this will work yeah i was i was told by so many uh, artists renowned artists that it won't work okay it's a beautiful song but it won't work it won't work for you da, 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 da. i was told all this kind of things but i had this obstinate nature in me that i don't give up if it works for me i don't care if it doesn't work for anybody you just so i just anyway. kept going But just before play song there's something you bring to mind that in fact I thought I could ask you at this particular time. Mm-hmm. The Ugandan mus- music of mm-hmm. fame did it is done your dance and all that. Yeah. Your kind of serenading music that is you know for the soul and all that mm-hmm. doesn't seem to get as much airplay and acclaim mm-hmm. as the usual yeah. you know, bit. Doesn't that bother you as an artist or you simply have resented the fact that Ugandan ears are low in terms of uh, music test. You know the thing is not everything that is out, is put out in the media works for everyone. People might be maybe grooving to it or loving it but there's certain kind of music that works for a certain kind of people. So mm-hmm. I speak to those that it works for. I don't care how many people I don't care about the numbers. So for you your music is Mercedes so to speak. Yeah. Not mass production of Toyota where you know mm-hmm. just throw everybody yeah. has a Toyota. No. I focus on my thing and it's all about me. Wow. Ntelede, a song by Nava Gray chosen by me on this program I'm hosting. <laughs> I mean, it just never gets better than this. I think I should have many of you like this on the program. Only challenge is that they, know, they, they don't make many of you anymore. So <laughs> we'll be right back. Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM. It's this that and this novel gray sharing her life story. An incredible Ugandan musician. If we must have you for gigs and all that. Mm-hmm. 
you must be all over the place. Of course, I, I perform. But you're not all over the place. So how is that life of you going? You get gigs, private gigs. Of course, gigs? I do. I do get. I, I oh. get gigs all the time. Okay. I get gigs. Uh, I have like a, kind of a, a team and a management that makes sure of that. That also even markets where you it's, are not. Exactly. Mm. What about uh, collabs with? Uh, artists outside our territory. I've had collaborations. Oh, we've seen um, you do one with a Nigerian guy, an English M. version. M.I. Uh, M. He used to call himself M.I. Now he calls himself M. I think he dropped the I. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he dropped why. the I. It happens. <laughs> you drop something. Exactly. So soon you'll be what? Nava, Nava. You drop the gray and just multiply Nava. Yeah. By two. Who knows? There, I've, I've done a collab. Sokalami is with uh, Speedy. He was part of a group called Bongo Muffin. Yes, the guys from uh, down south. Yeah, theater. I've done collaborations with artists here as well. Monji, mm -hmm. uh, I've done with Cooper from the gospel section. I, I think so many artists. But tell me, these collabs, how do they come about? I mean, you just pick a phone, you are there walking, doing mind your own business, and the call comes through from no, some no, no, strange manager. Most of the time, they are, or you meet somewhere. And say, guys. There are guys that are in the industry that have been really accommodative. I mean, somebody that is so down to earth. I mean, you don't have to go through some complications to get there. Mm -hmm. so, some around the the circles that I, ah. you know. So you just meet and then say, oh, I think we can strike this. Mm. Like we did agree earlier mm -hmm. that and you and some, I And some, the management right? kind of makes sure, because I did a collaboration with uh, this Amarula guy in Zambia. Mm -hmm. And then another one in Zambia called, he calls himself Chameleon. 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 <laughs> but he's a legend there. Wow. Yeah. How many? So many. Yeah, like I was saying earlier on. And so many coming through. Like yes, mine yeah. today, again, I've said, uh, you and I have to do a collab on yeah. serious one. Yeah. You understand. You could, we could do a good rapper or something. Because <laughs> 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 you love to talk. <laughs> Very interesting. Mm. They are experiences I wouldn't imagine for myself. Mm. Being on a stage and there's thousands of people. Yes. I mean, it could took me a long time to adjust to that pressure. That. Like you get on stage and all eyes on you. Mm -hmm. So like if it's consistent, it's like a process, I mean, to adjust. Not Even Beyonce still gets the really? shiver. I know if she came to the Kivuo Stadium, for example, I think Folks, we'd give her the... I mean, those are strange faces. <laughs> I know. If usually... she came to Cricket Oval, we'd give it to hey, her. Hey, <laughs> man. <laughs> What's the biggest stage you've been at? Um, there was a stage in South Africa where they had uh, all these artists, international artists. It was like a something fest during that time. I think I'd released, I just released Sokalami. That was like 2014. Mm -hmm. I think that was the biggest stage I was in. When you go on huge there. And you're there and mm -hmm. everyone is, you, you can't see like. You just see fog and lights. Exactly. And, and the sun shining onto you know, faces, strange faces. But these guys were so cheerful with the music that they don't even understand. Because they love Daliba One, everyone was just jumping to Daliba One. It was a good experience. They don't know what it means. But I always know. worry that maybe at some point, as a musician, you can forget your lines. Is that possible? Yeah, it is. Especially, those, especially if, for example, uh, maybe you go to this function and maybe the bride or maybe this corporate function and there's this song that you don't, you don't usually perform. And they ask for it. And they ask for it. So you have to do a lot of rehearsals. Which sometimes is a is a is a crazy thing here. It's a myth here. There are no rehearsals uh, usually. Has it ever happened to you? Of course. Forgotten. But then you know how to. You play around with it. You're trained to just you know. But again, for the most part, many of you Uganda musicians don't actually sing. <laughs> you like. mime your own songs. <laughs> do you do that? No, no, no. I don't. I you find it, I find it very difficult. That's why I do a lot of uh, live music. Mm, I go Not DJ track bands. number six. Uh, that thing kind of disorganizes me. So sometimes I tell the DJ to shush and I actually do an acapella and it's done. Band music mm. and the actual song that we listen Here to. On CD. Yeah. Sometimes there's a bit of variation. Yeah. Sometimes occasioned by the fact that yeah. now you recorded at 2 a.m. Now you're performing at 10 p.m. Exactly. You've had a long day and yeah, all that. Yeah. Do you also feel the disappointment in you not executing it as it sounds? It, it, it's, it's painful. For example, the instrumentation. That's why I think every artist should have like the right instruments and the right instrumentalists. 
and the right backup artists because I've had this problem whereby I'm going to, let's say, perform a certain song and I have to do rehearsals today and the backups that I have don't have the right, the same, mm. you know, rendition of, what they call it, the voice. The tones the, the, are... As uh, the ones that you And want. others are complaining that the words are too many. I think we're a bit lazy. I know. In <laughs> EG, <laughs> because if, I'm, uh, if I went to Nairobi and I had this kind of experience where these guys were on point at every time, like if they tell you it's, it's, it's five, it's five. They tell you we need this perfected, it's going to be perfected. Mm -hmm. Where Whatever instrument we need to get, let's get it. By hook or crook. But here you can do away with... A saxophone and just uh, use a bubble. You know, you just have to... <laughs> You just have to do things right. And you need time sometimes. You can't do ru rush things. But the experience that I got here, you just have to go with the flow. You go with the flow. Mm. But, that also but you have to perfect your perf performance. If someone else fails at, you know... Cover, cover, cover them up so that yeah. then you remain Yeah, eight. because I've recently done something with UNCC. Mm -hmm during the COVID, uh, the Just pandemic. the Uganda National Council. Yes, uh, whereby I didn't have a backup. But I, uh, but everything went on perfectly. Wow. I backed myself up. Imagine, imagine singing and backing <laughs> yourself up. I wonder how you do that. And I didn't know that I would pull it off, but I pulled it off. Never agree? Yeah. Sokalani is our next song. Sokalami. Sokalami. Yeah. I don't know why I already that. Sokalami. Sokalami. Yeah. What exactly does that song mean? Anyway, it sounds uh, Zulu to me. Like it, they pronounce it Zoga. Mm -hmm. Like the K becomes G and the S becomes Z. Oh my goodness, now. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go through that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, before I started to sing this song. So Sokalami means my husband or my lover. Wow. Yeah. And in what language is that? That is Zulu. So you can speak Zulu? I can't. But you can speak But it's in two. two. You can uh -huh. relate to it. Zogalami. So I just get you the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Be mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Must stand and let's love each other. Must see you the song. Take me, is it? Take me away. Come wow. and take me away. It's quite a very interesting one. Yeah. So when you got these lyrics, mm. you had to call somebody who speaks Zulu and they guide yes. you on the pronunciation. Yes, yes. I had to know the pronunciation because. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? I, I, I don't like to. That's a nice one. Eh? <laughs> Good prop. And it doesn't bite. I was like, just that little house, house. dog. Oh, you know, I had this, this. I remember there was a time when I was coming from work. That must be on our home. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh my she, goodness, I hope it doesn't come back. Sorry. The Zulu song. I'm sorry for that disruption. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask, what is it that you fear most in life right now? Dogs. dogs. No, 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 no. And a bit no, of cats. No. I think that's one of the things why I used to move around with my mother when I was young. Because <laughs> at my grandfather's place, they had all these dogs. They called Suki. They called whatever. And I could not. You couldn't stand their presence. I couldn't presence. stand it from that <laughs> age. From that age. So I'd go back to mom while the rest of my siblings stayed over. Let's go Spend back to Sokalami yeah. and how you got this Zulu thing going. Yeah, Sokalami. Sokalami was, uh, the, especially the, the collabo beat. Mm -hmm. um, I, like I told you, my manager that during that time was half Zimbabwe and half Zambian. He grew mm -hmm. up in South Africa, so he was well accommodated with the artists there. So it was easy for him to kind of, you know. Get you a perfect fit. A collaboration. So he wow. got me speedy. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, we rolled. And it's rolling like crazy yeah let's get a feel of it tonight on the program when we return it's now personality profiling as we close the program desert island discs on 91.3 capital fm So 
sweet, passionate, pure. Don't think twice. They were meant for you. So kalami, umoami, masitandane, masiwude so. In all the promises made, they remain the same. This is your yummy shy when I when I wait. Well, we're having an interesting conversation here with Ndava Grace. She shares her life story with us on the program, and we just you know, quickly after a little bit of an experience with a dog around the house, mm. we are finding out what other forms of phobia do you have? Oh, I got so many. Mm -hmm. But mainly animals. Animals. Lizards. <laughs> animals being alone. Like, like, like staying in, in this house alone. Mm -hmm. uh, you just want to be around people. Yeah, I don't want to be around strangers. Mm -hmm. Though the music beat kind of helped me adjust with that entire thing. But before it was crazy. Wow. Like living in that house, in mm -hmm. that Tusker Project fame house for that long was... The one of the most daunting was experiences crazy. you've ever like, had. Like, um, surrounded with strangers. It was tough. Are me. you an introvert, if I may ask? Like, someone who likes to keep themselves? Or do you just like to keep around people you know? I want to keep... I love to keep around people that I know. Are you shy? I think. Explains the shades this evening. <laughs> <laughs> I've always had the shades ever since I started the music and journey. Uh, why? Why do you musicians? Love I don't know, shades? but I mean, there's a, I mean, the fact that your life is out there. You need to give it a bit of a sh Yes. Be a bit shady. Exactly. I mean, they shouldn't know everything about you. I mean, you'll lose your other self. Your other there's self. something you should keep for yourself. Tonight, we have to unveil you a little bit more. Mm. I mean, we know you for your beautiful music, mm. but we don't know, for example, what's your favorite dish? Mm. Chicken. How cooked, roasted, grilled, or as, long, as long as it's chicken. In any form. Yeah. I used to love meat, but it, there's that point where it's, it, it becomes so hard. Mm -hmm. so I don't like that, really. And I love to cook my dishes. Aha. Uh -huh. You're a good cook? I love to cook because I love to eat. That's not necessarily the truth, man. <laughs> People who love to eat don't necessarily know how to cook. <laughs> I don't know, but me, I'm speaking on behalf of myself. For my upbringing. Yeah. You are taught how to cook. No, we're not taught how to cook because mm -hmm. we had lots of maids around. Mm -hmm. Because I never knew where Matoke came from. You thought it was just from the... I thought from the, the peels that they put in that ditch uh -huh. is where the Matoke kind of came, came from. from. <laughs> Until we were taken to the village. And you saw the stains. Exactly. And I knew how the entire thing happens. But interestingly, there must be some things that you cannot cook. Like? I'm asking. And there are some things you can't cook. Maybe those exotic dish, dishes, mm -hmm. the continental. The but the Ugandan ones, yeah. The Ugandan can, ones I can cook. You're kidding me. Can mm -hmm. you make kalo, for example? No, I, I don't like kalo, so I don't make it. <laughs> See? It's only the dishes that I love to. That you love to, yes. that you can work on. Wow. Kalo is from your side, isn't it? Well, there's a bit of kalo there, but I love matoki. My favorite dish is matoki. Are you sure? Oh, yes. If there's a bit of groundnuts. 90% water? I, keep, I need to keep hydrated. <laughs> For sure, I will try that. The ugali with the Nigerian, I mean with the, <sighs> with the Kenyan. ugali with the Kenyan. Uh, well, I love it when I'm there, but uh, here. They I don't really know how to prepare it nicely. Here. The Kenyans. There. Well, I don't need different tests for different ugali, folks. The ugali, the mm -hmm. the that When you're there, you love it. But to me, I'm at home. Mm. It's posho. You love posho? No. Mm. But okay. Posho, I will eat when I go to jail. That's the step. Eh. Yeah, I had enough in high school. <laughs> the only place to eat posho now. The and beans. Eh? Yeah, that's now a prison. Oh. But anything short of that, you won't And they me. cooked it badly. The bean whip was worse. So. Now, as part of the protein. But the places that where they, they, they cooked it, it was really cooked well. Yeah, when you cook it well, you can eat it. I think so. Maybe when I'm hungry yes. enough. <laughs> and the beans don't have... Be, have Not have, boiled, but, you know, a bit, you know, yeah. peppered here with yeah. some uh, royal. These were just biased. <laughs> no, seriously. How do you wash down your favorite dish? How, what do you drink? What I drink? Uh, water, juice. No wines, nothing. Nothing. Your no alcohol, nothing. 
Never, you don't take any alcohol. The last time I took alcohol, I was I was told the next day, like people had to narrate what I did, and I didn't like the entire You're such experience. A it was just one. No, like mistake. seriously, the things I did. Yeah, but you didn't kill under nobody. the influence. You didn't kill nobody. Like seriously, no. Were you the then there are those drinks that used to give me a headache, and I mm. wonder why I'm drinking this and it's giving me a headache. That's part of the experience. No, like seriously, I can't. <laughs> I mean, we're supposed to eat these things to feel good. Good. No headaches. Why no headaches? Have you seen how people take gin? Now this is how it's done. How so you don't get headaches <clears throat> from? Now the moment you do the <clears throat> the headaches go. No, to, a, to, a, to an observer, you're suffering, <laughs> but to you, now so you're doing it for the observer. After that, you not say not for yourself. No, for yourself, you are enjoying your. Like, ah, so that's as a good some one. of you forced to drink because of <laughs> the peer observer. pressure, feel bad. No. I thought that's the oxygen that musicians like you. Mm -hmm. What about? Um, I think I'm not like the rest of the musicians. You once in a while. Uh, because I remember when I was getting into the industry, I had these people, I had these uh, friends that used to tell me, "You have to drink because you need to go on stage warmed up." Yeah. So I thought I was really getting warmed up, but I didn't get to my head. So I couldn't do it again. But well, that was just drinking. The other things that warm people. No, up. no, no, no. Have like, you tried those? okay, like what? As a musician, I like mean, weed and stuff. Uh -huh. I remember the last time I tried weed, it gave me a headache as well. But didn't give you a bit of wings? You did no, feel no, no, like no. you so were. So I anything sorry. that gives me headaches mm -hmm. and, and problems, yet I'm supposed to take it for pleasure, it's giving me headaches, then these things they don't work will work for so me. So you said these ones don't work for me, I'll go clean. Yes. Now but where do we see you in the next five years? Do we see you gracing billboard covers for a concert at Central Park West in New York and these are the great mm -hmm. stages in the world? Oh, do you want to retire and just be a private person, raise your daughter, get other children, do your business in Uganda? Or, we have plans. like other musicians I've been seeing around, especially in the recent past, mm. find you in a ballot paper? Huh. We, we, <laughs> make, like we, we, we make plans, eh? <laughs> but God's plans usually take shape. And, um, okay, I have plans. I have plans to, to build foundations, to establish people. For example, you find a lot of homeless people around, and I mean, you find one person, uh, for example, I don't want to mention politicians or whoever, mm -hmm. or business people that have a lot of money, but it's there lying a, a, around and they They're kind of the invest in things that are really don't make sense. I mean, we're supposed to be one, we should love one another. I remember the last time I took, I, I took a flight and went abroad, and I found that Ugandans don't have that. You see a fellow Ugandan, but you're afraid to approach. You know the reason as to why foreigners are making a lot of um, are successful at whatever they do. I mean, they recognize yeah, their fellow countrymen. You know, countrymen. I mean, we don't have that when we go abroad. So I want to like the five in five years time. I see myself kind of building Running foundations, advocacy, advocacy and act, yeah, being an activist for such things. We should be for one another. You know, that's how politicians start becoming politicians. Mm. So mm, in five really, years, you're an advocate and, a, and an activist. I don't want to be a politician, the next, though. Then we'll see you on a ballot paper. I yeah. want to be a do person. I don't want to be that one person that yaps a lot and then does nothing. You want to do the, the doer. Day. Yeah, be the doer. Wow, I yeah. love that. Yeah. Music still or...? Of course, a little bit of music because I can never part from that, even if I want to. Like Noah decided, I mean, who was this prophet? Was it Noah? Mm -hmm. Who was swallowed by the big fish? Who was that one? Jonah. Jonah. Like he was sent to do something, to run an errand, and he is swallowed by the fish. Was swallowed by the fish until he had to accept to do that exactly. I'm always wondering what he actually told his wife and whether she believed him. <laughs> he was swallowed by a fish. On, we need that days. version of the story. Yeah? <laughs> that one, nobody writes about it. But on the other hand, Nava, one would be interested to know, for example, musically, you have a genre of your own. Yeah. It's not the usual. Inspired by my bringing the music that I listen to, the soul, the African music. Exactly. What about the time you want? Do you feel that childhood? Um, uh, I, I don't know the term for it, but they call it some kind of curiosity to try out other genres and see how they work for you. Like. Yeah, when you just go and sing a bit of Kwaito and uh, get a bit crazy with a bit of Dinga. Oh, the Kwaito. Uh, uh, I'm trying. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lady called Kelly Kumalo. Mm -hmm. South African, we're trying to do a collab with her. Uh -huh. She's South African, she's doing big in South Africa. Wow. So, the yeah, same thing with, that happened with Speedy is happening. 
Wow, so we can wait now to that you drop mentioned it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've done a, a couple of songs as well. No, I you think. are an incredible person. On the, Which other genre should I try? Caribbean, uh, maybe a bit of Mexican, uh, uh, reggaeton, maybe Brazilian. <laughs> 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 Classicals, you would make a very good Reg one. reggae. I've done a bit of reggae with Mvuma. Ah. I listen to Mvuma. There's also ah. another song called Fumba, which is new. It's on YouTube now. And many more songs, collaborations that are coming through. As we conclude our program, Nav, of course, it wouldn't be justice if I don't ask you what you make of uh, the COVID situation and its impact on young people, especially those in the creative arts where you apply your trade. I Sorry, I'm uh, no, being a bit hard, but it's about your life COVID, story. And, and it, you could speak to it from your own experience. You know, I wrote a song, that song called Fumba, mm -hmm. uh, before COVID. That was like 2019, March. And every word, every lyric, that when I listened to the lyrics again, I was like, I, it was like a prophecy kind of song. Fumba, lumba, tewe fula, tewe chawa, tulanga boyunga, kubasiga ya kungula. Not knowing that this, the 2020, was going to be about that hustle kind of the year where everyone is going to give up. You know, your, your businesses have been put on hold. Mm -hmm. And then you have to to kind of rise up again and, you know, well, you get to. Wow. you understand? So I mentioned about the storm that comes, that can be calmed as well. So it has kind of... Prepared you as an individual yeah, for the hard times. That for the hard ahead. times, we have to be ready. We don't know what else is coming. There could be some situations to come in the future. Worse than COVID. Worse than COVID. So what we would, we would do? I mean, it's just a, a scratch and everyone is panicking. We shouldn't give up and we should be prayerful because God is the mastermind. I love that. Prayerful. Word you time. know? No, but Prayer has never left me. It's something so part of me. I can't live without it. Teenage daughter. Mm -hmm. Any plans of having others? Having what? Teenage daughter now, any plans of having others? Others. God willing. Inshallah. 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 Yeah. Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> You've opened your arms to divine intervention. Yeah. This is a beautiful country. Mm. I don't know how far and wide you have traveled it. This but without a doubt, Fort Uganda Porto. is a beautiful country. So I love Port Fort Porto. You love Fort Porto. I want to go as far as Kavari. Come be my guest. But I want to go that far. What do you love about Fort Porto? My goodness, it's quiet. It's so quiet, the nature, everything's so beautiful. It's clean. And uh, I had the mayor is a priest, a, bi what a, a, bi a priest, I haven't a, a followed pastor. The, 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 the mayor uh -huh. of that place is a pastor. Wow, I haven't followed the Imagine. developments. So it's down a spiritual kind of kind of It journey. connects with my spirit. It's one place that I can go to, I think, and, and write a few Lyrics. songs and come back and hit the studio there and then. How about trying maybe singing the next song in their local dialect? Rutoro. My goodness, I wish so. Yeah, you know, it, it serenades. Just you know Rutoro? Naturally. Uh, it, you know? It, 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 it's the slowest edition of my own language. We speak fast and hard. They speak, they speak soft and slow. <laughs> but like, it's a beautiful language. I like, I like the, the, the richness, the, the, that raw feel. Like they are raw and, you know, it reminds me of where I came from. When, before I came into the music industry, there was that raw kind of nature. When Everything was, was so new. new. So it's like, uh, what, how would you term Port Porto after listening to what I'm trying to... Well, I would say, <laughs> I would use one word. I think like it's, bath? It's, it's just virgin. It's a place yeah, that has not yes, been exactly. bastardized virgin. by anything. It's just virgin. So that's a place I want to go to that has not... Six of ten people that sit over there, mm. when I ask them that question, they say Port Porto. See? Just like six. So there are no coincidences. Only ten people that sit there choose another grey soul. It's a spiritual affair. <laughs> We've met. <laughs> With these people in one yes, way or another. Yes, yes. In one specific realm somewhere. Thank me. I think I choose the same kind of people that love Nava Grey music and love football as an May God a. thank you for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nava Grey, we know that your life story continues to inspire mm. many people. Mm. And we know that you're still growing just in many ways, yeah. spiritually, musically, and even in your business. We know for a fact that you will return to the program to share what's left of your life. For story. real, I will. But for now, we must thank you thank for you taking so time off your very busy schedule. Be with us. Thank you for having me. For you, the listeners and viewers, from wherever it is that you watch and listen to us, from we never take your presence for granted. You could have been elsewhere, but you just be on the program. Nava Gray is going to do us the honor of uh, doing an acapella for us. Niña, si niña. 
Mugombe, <laughs> I don't know the title of that Which song, song because everybody has a different title to that particular mm, song. And they're um, they're right. They're free to call it anything. Yeah. What do you call it? That song. Ningo Mulogi. Ningo Mulogi. Aha. We are waiting for the acapella. That's mm. mm. Play. Ah, Pretend to play. I think now there's no power on the <laughs> keyboard. All right. Um. Uh. Kera kumuketa buliwe buchanga Tambuza kasobo Negendele zobu takwa mugunya Sandi ya gadama nye Timuwe goro kuwa guno mkwano guntuma Gunja gaza ye Chiva chizibu nyo Ukutebele zantina ye wacho waulia Sidi mbao na yantia wo Kumanya ya mara wo Siche sawo Nobu inza Eri obula mwange ya buwamba Hiya ntwala ye Ninya siri nya Tunulanga ataba Simanyi chicha mfude ya ye Ningo mwuloge I see you can sing Sinya siri nya Tunulanga ataba Smani chicham fude aye ningo muloge. Thank you now for grace me the pleasure and yes, thank you for gracing the program. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you too. Kera kumuketa buri webu changa tambuza kasobo negendele zobu tagwa muunya sandi agada manye. Mube goro kuba guno mkwano guntuma Gunja gaza yeda Chiba chizivu nyo Kutebele santina ye wacho wa ulira Simba ono yantea wako kwa nanimalo Kuhiza ayo kwa mwango Ya tuala Inya siri nya Sunula anga tala Subira kubana yeyo mudasi Subira kubana mulala ena Ya singira balala Kuomu kwano kwa ndaga kwa susu Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM.